this week in post, focus stacking in Photoshop. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to InPost. And today we're gonna to be doing some focus stacking and I'll be using Photoshop to do this. This is like our focus stacking theme this week. If you saw in the field earlier, you know that I went out to a particular location with these long corridors to capture some focused stacked images. Well, now we're gonna take those and put them together. And I'm gonna use Photoshop to do that because that is a really good tool for focus stacking. If you don't have Photoshop, and you don't want to do any manual masking, um, I believe that the free utility GIMP, that's a open source package, has some focus stacking capability in it. I haven't personally tried it out, but the concepts are the same. And so we're gonna do a couple of things here. We're going to stack all the images together to have a new layer with all of the in focus portions. And then we need to do a little bit of cleanup because as good as the tools are, sometimes, there's a bit of work we need to tidy up at the end of it. So let's look at what we've got here. These are all the photos that I captured. And if you remember from in the field, I did this thing with my hand. I stuck it in front of uh, the camera after I was all done. So I knew which sequence of photos I need to stack together. So these are all the photos I'm gonna do. And if I'll pop into the develop module on one of them here really quickly, you can see that all I've done is set a profile, and done some very minor adjustments just to make sure that I'm not clipping anything drastic. And if I turn on the clipping, I've got a tiny bit out here, somewhere buried in here, there's a tiny bit in the shadows, and that's all gonna be fine. Those are not important details. Everything else, I'll do the processing after I've done the focus stacking. So back to the grid view, and we will select these five photos, and we'll go up to photo, We'll say edit in and all the way down at the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop. So we'll send these over to Photoshop and then we'll do the stacking. All right, so we've landed over in Photoshop. Photoshop's got all of the layers here in the layer stack. And there's a couple of things that I'll do here. The first thing I'll do is align the layers. If you saw in the field, you have a couple of options and I just used my hand to go and reset the focus points. That means I may have introduced slight changes to my composition, my tripod setup. If you're using a remote or you've got a camera that will automatically reset focus points and just stack through a scene, you really don't have to do the alignment. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway. So I'll select all the layers and go up to edit and auto align layers. I'll just let Photoshop figure that out. And in a moment we'll have everything aligned. Now the next step I like to do, this is not strictly required, but I like to duplicate all of my source layers. The reason for that is there's usually some set of cleanup that I'm going to need to do after the focus stacking is done. So I wanna keep my original photos around without any masks, so I have that source material to blend in if I need it. So over here on the layer stack, I'll right click, and I'll just say duplicate layers. All right, so now I've got a set of those down here. My top five, these are basically the same thing. With the five set that I wanna focus stack together selected, I'll go to edit and auto blend. Now you have two different blending options and typically Photoshop recognizes that this scene is the same more or less and it says, oh, you wanna do focus stacking. So it'll select that for you. And I tend to choose the seamless tones and colors. That'll balance things out. I'll let this run while I talk. Like some of these undersides here, if there was changes in light, because you know the sun was moving in and out of some clouds there, even though the sky looks blown out, that'll all get balanced out. But what Photoshop is doing now is it's trying to figure out what are all the areas of the photo that are, that are crisp, that have good contrast, that are in focus. And then it creates these pretty elaborate masks to hide and reveal certain layers so that you end up with a full stack that shows everything. Now, I wanna make sure I turn off these bottom layers here so none of that is bleeding through. But you can see these masks are, are quite intricate and it's not always what you expect to see. When I shot this, I focused here, 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 and then finally at the center there. So I would have expected a little more masking in the center area because I know my last focus point was set here. This is one of the areas you have to start getting involved with, with the cleanup. One other thing is worrying about pieces of the scene that may have moved. So these trees, this little bit of bush here, let me zoom in, and we're gonna start to see 
it kind of looks a little funny right there's glitching here and that's because between each frame the wind was blowing and those leaves on this plant were moving around so i'm going to deal with this first what i'm going to do is take the set of focus stacked images i'm just going to merge those all together so right click and merge those together now photoshop's done its work it's done its, its shot at what it thinks needs to be masked away i'm going to take that and now um, I'll turn on this bottom layer here. I'll turn this off for a moment. We're going to see this is very crisp, right? Now I know by the sequence of shots, three, four, five, six, seven, I always shoot starting in the foreground and working all the way to the background. And I'll leverage that in post. So I know that this first shot here, my foreground, my things closest to my camera, those are going to be in focus. So I'll grab a masking brush and we'll just kind of paint in a mask here. Let's go ahead and add a masking layer. Maybe add a little bit of a feather to the brush, get our brush tool. And then we can just start to bring this plant back in just to make it look crisp. Nothing else in the scene was moving. These cracks on the wall didn't change. The position of the pillars didn't change. Everything else is uh, just steady. So it makes it a very easy masking job. All right. So that's the cleanup piece number one. Now the other thing is this very distant end of this corridor. I know that was the last thing that I photographed, the last frame, and that's where I'd set my focus point. So I know that even Photoshop didn't quite see it and I'm looking at the screen and I'm not really seeing a difference there, but I'm gonna bias toward bringing in the, the, uh, the, the very far end of the corridor from one of my other photos. So I've done these two. I'm going to take these two guys and I'm going to merge them down. So I'll merge those layers together. I'll activate this very bottom layer and let's reposition ourselves. So we're over here and let's get a mask layer set up. We'll get our brush and I'm just going to bring in the very distant part of this scene. I'm just kind of slowly circling my way outward. The mask doesn't need to be perfect because I'm really just blending in where I know this is gonna be sharp. And maybe a little bit more of that, that portion, something like that. Pop the feather up a little bit, sweep that around a little bit more. There we go, that's gonna be fine. And we're basically done. So this is the process of the foking stacking. And I think the tip of the week is that you do need to do some cleanup and you can't just arbitrarily trust Photoshop's masks. Keep in mind what you did in the field and then use that knowledge to fine tune and, and just clean up the photo. Now, something else I get asked a lot about focus stacking is, can I do this in on one? And I don't really think so. I don't advocate using on one for focus stacking. It's just not the right tool for that particular job. Could you handcraft the masks to do that blending? Uh, sure, it would be a kind of painstaking. This particular scene where we have some pretty straightforward to find focal planes. It's almost like each arch, like, you know, this archway is one focal plane. Go down the next, this is another, and third and fourth. It starts to get a little muddier as you get down into here. And you could use like a, a series of uh, radial mask bugs to blend all the pieces together. But that's this particular scene. Think of something more complex where you have a variety of things that are raised uh, like above a horizon that are more foreground, but then some midground, some background, the masks start to become more and more complicated. Could you do it? You could, uh, but it is going to be uh, kind of a painstaking masking job. So on one layers really isn't the right tool for focus stacking. A couple of scenes, you know, and types of photos, maybe you can get away with it. But for the general approach, uh, I advocate using Photoshop or some other tool that has focus stacking built right into it. That's going to do it for this week's in post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. Comments in the video below. Questions are always great. I keep sending those questions. Love hearing from you. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.